OK, so we're now ready to build our first transformation graph. And uh, we're going to read in a CSV file with customer information. So uh, first thing we do is actually to create a new project. So I go File, New. And uh, if you've run Eclipse before, you'll see Clove for ETL project, which is what you click on. If you haven't, it's the first time you're running it, then go to Other. And in here, you'll find Clover ETL, and you can select Clover ETL project from there. After you've run it the first time, though, uh, what I can do is see just select it straight from this sub menu. So Clover ETL project, we'll call this customers. Leave the defaults. OK. If I expand that, we can see the default folders that are automatically created when you create a new Clover project. And uh, what I'm actually going to do is to put in some sample data into the data in folder. Obviously, with Clover, you can take data from absolutely anywhere. Um, but let's keep it simple to start off with. And we're going to create a new file in there. And uh, that's going to be called um, customers. CSV. Click on finish. Now it automatically brings up in this case Notepad, uh, and I'm just going to paste in the data that I've uh, taken out of the the file. If you open the Quick Start Guide on the web, you'll find this data ready to copy and paste from that, and you do the same thing. You just paste it into here. So we'll save that and close it, and now we've got Customer CSV populated, ready for us to play with. So now what we're going to do is to create a graph. So I go new graph, ETL graph here. Uh, we'll give this a name. So we'll call this load customers. So just go straight to finish. And now we're ready to build our first data transformation graph. So uh, on the right hand side here, you can see we've got the different categories of graph component. Um, for reading data in, the readers, logically, is the right place to look. And we can read, you can see, from the different types of data source here, lots of different ones, LDAP, XML, DBF, um, generic uh, database readers. In this case, the universal data reader is good for reading in text files, uh, whether locally or even from the internet. So let's uh, double click on this now to bring up the property dialog. And usually the uh, the regularly used, most regularly used property is at the very top, but there are other ones uh, it's worth just having a quick flick through to, to, to familiarize yourself with the options that these things have. So let's go to the file URL. So we click in this field and then on the dot 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 button to bring up the file locator. Um, as I said, we could enter in here a URL uh, or something on our local file system. In this case, that's what we're going to do. We'll click on the data in directory bookmark. When I double click on that, it takes us straight to the folder where we created our customer CSV file. I'm going to double click now on customer CSV, click on OK, and if I click on apply, you'll see the uh, the little warning sign's gone there. So it's got a it's it's got a valid parameter. Click on OK, and that's now set up. So uh, what we can do um, is to right click on the graph component and we can view the data. So we can see how Clover is actually going to read that data in off the disk and then pass it on to the next graph components, which we haven't yet built. Click on View Data. We can specify how many records to read in. Click on OK. And there you can see it's brought in the whole file. As we add more components, you'll see how we can actually process and transform all of this. But in the meantime, we'll click on OK and save. And that's the uh, the end of the first video. The next videos will take that and do more interesting things with it.